Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan, where it's very bright and sunny today. Yeah, I We're know. a little squinty. A little blinded. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about one of our favorite group of fish, killifish. Specifically, the Nothobronchius killifish. It's probably my favorite genus of killies. They're, there's just something about them that just really, really does it for me. They are absolutely gorgeous fish. I would dare argue. Yeah, I'm gonna say it this way. The most colorful freshwater aquarium fish. Yeah, every single time someone comes up to me and says, this is my favorite Nothos species, my exact response is, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter what species it is. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just a bunch of different amazing paint jobs, basically. Right, yeah. They are also fantastic small aquarium fish. Mm -hmm. Any aquarium that you can put a betta, okay, any aquarium we think you can put a betta, <laughs> you can put a notho as long as it is a tightly covered frame. They are phenomenal jumpers. They will find a way up in the opportunity. Yeah, it's spectacular their ability to find those. So why can they take such small tanks? Well, they are an annual killifish. That oh, they're going to die in six months. Yeah, right? they're going to die in six months. Okay. Well, first off, we're going to explain the difference between life expectancy and lifespan, and then I'll get into their lifestyle. Right. right. Um, this is where we say right here, myth busted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, the lifespan of a human being is around 120 years, meaning if everything is perfect, yep. you could potentially live that long. Mm -hmm. The life expectancy is very dependent on where you're living. <laughs> right your health concerns, your genetic background, all that stuff. Whether or not your pond dries up. Exactly. Oh, wait, talk, talk people. So getting back to Achilles, their life expectancy in the wild is like six to eight months because that's how long their ponds last. In a tank where their pond doesn't dry up, their life expectancy suddenly shoots up to three to five years. It's funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if a fish has water, it will live longer. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I had Nothobronchus Rokovii, male. He was about that big, oh, and he made it to five years. Oh, that's awesome. And was gorgeous the whole time. And yes, these are fantastic fish for breeders, and we definitely need to talk about that. But a single male? I mean, the attitude, the color, the activity, they're so fun to keep, even if you're not breeding them. I would line that fish up next to a fancy betta any day of the week. Now I might be a little biased because I'm a wild <laughs> feta guy, but I like the Nothos better than most domestic strain fancy bettas I've seen out there. Um, just because there are some amazing colors in those fancy bettas. They can't come close to the patterns on the Nothos. Like, yeah. <laughs> and the Nothos are natural. You can put them in almost the same circumstances as fancy bettas. Um, they're going to be a little bit more accomplished predators, mm -hmm. and they're going to be a little bit more prone to aggression and bullying. I know domesticated bettas have this really scary reputation. They're fighting fish. Yeah, and in, a, in a community tank, we're more often worried about them getting picked on than the other way around, as long as you're not keeping them with other bettas. Yeah. With Nothobronchius killifish, you're going to probably want to be very cautious about what you put them with, if anything, I think. They can carry a tank on their own, and that's probably the best way to do them. The thing to keep in mind is, in their environment, they're literally the only fish in the pond. Sometimes in an elephant footprint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, their entire instinct is, I have to defeat this other guy so I can get the ladies because I've got maybe six months to make it work. And so when you're dealing with that strong instinct, where they don't have a context for, this is not competition. That's one of the amazing things about Nothos. From the time that egg hatches to six months later when that pond dries up, that fish hatches, grows into a doll, mates more than once, and that's its whole life, six to nine months. And wow. gets to an inch and a half long. Yeah. It's crazy, and trying to replicate that in a tank is really cool, by the way. So, <laughs> and not as hard as it thinks. Nothos are a dirt spawning killie, so I use um, compressed bricks of uh, terrarium coconut fiber that uh, you like hydrate and it'll sink. 
and uh, like little Tupperwares, that's the word, Tupperwares. Why coconut fiber over peat moss? Because peat moss is unsustainably harvested, so I think long term we as breeders need to find other options. <laughs> and coconut husk is a great one. Yeah. It works just as well. Yeah, and you can look back on our, we actually did a video on dirt spawning killifish in general that applies perfectly to Nothobronchias. They are basically the poster child for it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But, um, I've kept pears in like two and a half gallon tanks and they seem to be fine. You always have to give hiding spots for the females because the males are, like I said, that instinct is very strong. They're, they don't know that your their pond isn't going to dry up so they have to make it happen right now. We would call them very eager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, lots of plants, lots of hiding spots. Yeah, and some, some little rocks where the female has a spot to get into. She's going to be smaller than the male. So some smaller crevices that maybe she can fit in and out of pretty easily, but can't necessarily fit in all of them. Yeah. And if you want specifics on breeding them, I'm refer you to our dirt spawning killy video. But what a lot of that breaks down to the quick points so that someone like has my pitch to someone to give it a go. Yeah. Is uh, the nice thing about them is if you don't want to be spawning them right now, don't put dirt in there. Right. And they're fine. Yeah. Or even better, have dirt in the tank, and when you want to collect eggs, just pull the dirt out start incubating it. The eggs, um, I use uh, fish bags mm -hmm. just to keep the coconut fiber and incubate them dry for 12 to 15 weeks, depending on the species. And uh, Some of them up to 24 to 30 weeks. Yeah. And, so here's the, and because of that range of like tolerability, um, the aspect is, uh, I don't feel like dealing with baby fish this week. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going out to like the in-laws for a three-day weekend. Okay, fine. Just go do that, and then when you want fish eggs and baby fish to deal with, then let the yeah. eggs. <laughs> they will continue to lay eggs in there, and those eggs will continue to be fine for a long time underwater. They just won't hatch. They won't do anything. They have to go through that dry up period in order to properly hatch. Yep. And leaving them in there like that. It's, it's like the rainy season lasted a month longer, or a week longer, or something like that. They're basically is, in stasis until they go through a dry period. Yeah. It's so cool. And then instant fish just add water. It's like my favorite part of none of those. I know. It's so, it's like, I've done it several times, and each time it's still like, I can't believe this works as I'm like pouring water in. So you are drying that coconut husk and putting it in a fish bag dry. It's not like we're keeping them wet in a fish bag. Uh, a little hint of dampness in there, mm -hmm. but if there's too much humidity in there, the eggs won't develop. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, like, I don't have a lot to say about breeding them because it's really not that complicated. And I think that's part of why I like them. It's just like, when you feel like dealing with it, then deal with it. Yeah. Raising them on baby brine shrimp, newly has baby brine shrimp, moena. Um, I had to use micro worms before. Micro worms work really well for, the, for getting those babies up just big enough. As soon as they have a little bit of size to them, they're hungry. They want to grow fast. They'll start taking crushed plate amazingly fast. Um, I've talked about, I think on the podcast specifically, a couple times about like, I've like drawn up a plan to like win Breeder of the, uh, Breeder of the Year award <laughs> at a club. And part of that plan is in um, the last three months of the year before, you're just collecting killifish eggs. Oh, yeah. And then in oh, yeah. January, you just spam. Start hatching. <laughs> and then, I like it. And so I'm like, I genuinely think that if you really want to get a jump start on a career award, like of the year award, that's the way to do it. Yeah. It's just this pre game with killifish eggs. <laughs> and you look pretty cool, too. <laughs> yeah. Like what? There's 20 different species of Notho in this in this auction. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be a good auction. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, what else is there to say? Did we talk about how pretty they are enough? I, I think we got into that a little. Bit. <laughs> we might have touched on it. I'll touch on their native habitat. I guess they're from. You mentioned Af uh, elephant footprints. They yeah. are from uh, West Africa. Uh, depending on the species, they're like northern South Africa, as in like the country South Africa, mm -hmm. and I think up to Mozambique. All the way through the grasslands into some of the forested areas. Yeah. Pretty much anywhere where the water dries up. <laughs> anywhere where there's water that lasts for more than like three seconds. Yeah, really a rainy season and a dry season in Africa, there's probably no those there. Yep. 
Well, these are some of our all-time favorite fish. You gotta come down to the gallery and check some of these out. They are pretty amazing. Yeah, and who among us doesn't have room for a little three or five gallon tank in their home? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think that's gonna be my pitch for. I think anyone who has room for a five gallon tank has the capability to be a breeder. Whether it's breeding egg scatterers from their main tank mm -hmm. or if they're working with bettas, keelys, I don't care. If you can fit a three to five gallon tank in your house, you have the capability to breed fish. You can breed fish. There are fish that fit that. Cool. Yeah. Well, let us know if anyone out there has kept Nothobronchius before or if you have a different favorite genus of killifish, you're always welcome to let us know. We might not put debate with you, we might just say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> also, if there's a very specific species of Nothobronchius that you're looking for, let us know. We do have some pretty good sources out there. Please. I think we had six or seven species on our list last week, so definitely some more interest. We'll get some more in. Yeah. And if you would like to see us talk about a particular genus or species of killifish, feel free to let us know. I'm always open to suggestions. Well, we are always open to suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. Subscribe to get notifications of new videos. Um, make sure to give us a like on this one. Leave us a comment, please, with any questions or comments. And um, keep in touch wherever you can find us. Facebook, Instagram, anything like that. Thank you so much for watching. Let's have lots of fun and keep those hands flowing.